So let me give you a brief overview of the Nordic market for grocery retail. My name is Johan Seyi. I work at Morganic Sourcing and we do market analyses and assist companies importing and exporting to and from the Nordic region and we specialize in organic products. So we are talking about here about five countries in the north of Europe. You can see, well, basically by the shape of their flags that there are lots of commonalities between these countries. Denmark, Norway and Sweden uh, have languages that are quite similar. Icelandic is also very closely related to these languages, while Finnish is a totally different language. However, there are lots of historic bonds between Finland and Sweden. Um, so this is a region that is very well integrated, where people have been crossing borders for decades without any problems with passports or anything like that. The population is about 27 million people and the gross domestic product, the output from this region is about 1,500 billion euros every year. So these are countries that are fairly well developed and have mature markets and that is true for groceries as well. In between them, uh, we, it's basically Sweden that is the larger market, the bigger country with about 10 million people. Denmark, Finland, Norway are all in between 5 and 6 million and Iceland um, hosts 360,000 inhabitants as it sits today. If we uh, look at the grocery um, grocery retail market, uh, Sweden being the largest country, the, the you know the most number of people to eat um, every day, and Sweden covers a bit more than one third of the total Nordic market for grocery retailing. Denmark, Finland, Norway each covers about um, twenty percent, and Iceland is about one percent of the uh, market. And the total value of the retail market in uh, the Nordic countries um, is uh, 80 billion euros. If we look at a single country like Sweden, um, the market does have different players, like uh, Ica being the dominator in this case, have almost half of the market. Axe Food and Co-op are the runners-up, and uh, the alcohol monopoly is an interesting feature in this market, which is also uh, part of the markets in Finland, Norway and Iceland. Um, you can see also that the market is fairly well consolidated, so that there are not too many players in a market like Sweden. And this is true if you look at the other Nordic countries as well, although the situation is a bit different from country to country. So you see in Sweden how Ica is the dominator. In Finland, there are two chains that basically rules the market. Norway have one big player and two slightly smaller, but they in turn control almost all of the market. Um, Iceland and Denmark are a bit different. Denmark is uh, the most differentiated country in the region, I would say. Now there are still some some uh, structures here to look out for if you are about to export products to this market. Co-op is present in all of the different sub-markets and they do coordinate their purchasing. The alcohol monopolies are present in four of the countries. Uh, they do not have a common purchasing but they do collaborate to some extent on purchasing in terms of sharing contacts and uh, intelligence and uh, policy development. Put in another way, um, again, Sweden is a larger market with quite a few players, uh, quite few players. Finland, basically only two players that, that control the market in Iceland and Denmark. Um, a lot more differentiated market and not a single ruler, if you wish. Um, Norway is somewhere in between. So, Paul was mentioning that he had been working at Co-op and uh, the Co-op does, well, it's the most important player at, a Nordic, at the Nordic level, uh, but it's also a uh, case study of, of a 
the normal chain behavior when it comes to purchasing. So um, the different co-op shops would be controlled from a company or an unit organization in Sweden called Co-op Purchase and Category. And this organization does control the range, um, the, the offers, the campaigns, uh, basically everything in these different stores. Um, they do also do the direct uh, purchasing of local, domestic, and to some extent Nordic products. So, co-op purchase and category controls the bulk of the volume and controls everything that happens basically in, in these shops. So even if you are a local um, supplier, you still have to go through a contact at the central unit co-op purchase and category. When it comes to European or global purchasing, um, the Swedish co-op works with a Nordic collaboration called the Co-op Trading based in Copenhagen and they do the purchasing outside basically of the, the uh, their own region. So Co-op Trading is a inter-Nordic collaboration, collaboration between the different co-ops in the different countries. If we look at the uh, a specific country and we look for these structures again um, in Norway, we have the situation Norgesgruppen is um, dominating the market and they are part of a purchasing collaboration called the United Nordic. Co-op is there, as you can see, Rema Tusan or Rema 1000 in English is, is um, uh, not part of the major trading blocks. And then we have the alcohol monopoly, which again is part of an informal collaboration with the other alcohol monopolies. So, strictly speaking, if you are looking at the big volumes in the Nordic region, there are three players that you need to uh, keep in mind. Co-op trading is the largest purchaser and represents a sales volume of about 20 billion euros. Ica, uh, by itself, Ica purchases, sorry, sells uh, groceries at a value that is slightly bigger than the total sales in a single country like Finland. Ica also controls the Baltic chain Rimi and the total purchasing uh, represents a sales value on the market of about 16 billion euros. United Nordic is just behind ICA and uh, Rimi with about 14 billion euros and the United Nordic is a um, collaboration between a number of separate uh, family owned companies basically that operate in, in um, Dagrofa is uh, the Danish representative and deals with uh, a lot of these independents that we were talking about uh, earlier. So also important to keep in mind in Denmark, uh, alcohol, alcoholic beverages are sold through the regular grocery retailing. In the other countries, uh, there are alcohol monopolies that do all the retailing of alcoholic beverages to consumers. So Systembolaget in Sweden, Alko in Finland, Vinbudin in Iceland and Vinmonopolet in Norway uh, control the, the retailing for things like wine or hard liquor, white liquor and also beers. Now, if you want to know more about this region, uh, please uh, go to our web shop and uh, download a full lecture for more details on the food spend, on the import potential for each of these countries, the market shares, the different chains, uh, sales volumes, e-commerce, and much more. Thank you very much for watching, and do visit our webshop.